this next fly, we're going to call it the Amnesia Damsel. The fly line that I just dumped out of this little container is actually 20 pound amnesia. Now, amnesia used to be used a lot in uh, shooting line systems. What I found is you can buy little tiny eyes, and they're called mono eyes. And I don't know how well you can see these. Okay, now you can buy those, they're not always easy to find. So with fly tying, it's always good to have a backup and being able to make your own, whatever that, that might be. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make some eyes and I'm going to show you how to do that. From holding the, the trigger. And then it burns too. So, can you, so you take the... the uh, Okay, and I'm just going slowly into it. Now, I, if I'm doing these in, in <laughs> if I'm doing this in a production group where I'm making maybe a hundred of them, I'll have a little cup of water and I'll just douse them. You gotta speak loud. No mercy. You gotta speak loud. Okay, can we see that? Okay. You see that, Ray? Yeah, that's cool. Cool. Okay, so I got I got a little amnesia set of eyes. Now, so we're going to take what's it? A, uh, the hook on this is called a zero one six seven. Now the important thing is it's a size fourteen. The straight eye I don't think makes that much difference, but. But a 4x long shank is, is important. Damsels, proportionately, are real thin and narrow. Unlike their cousins, which are the dragonfly, which are thick and short and plump, like my thumb. Okay? So, what you want is the thinnest hook possible. Now, I've landed some pretty good sized fish with this size hook. I think this one's also a 1x strong. Yeah. You could technically use like a dry fly hook, but the wire is just a little too thin for, for the size of fish that you're likely to catch. So with this one, I simply tie my thread on the head, trim it, and, and I'm going to tie in these, these eyes. I'm going to hold them with my tweezers. You can hold them with your fingers. All I'm going to do is put them as close to the eye as possible and do some figure eights so that I can lock them in. Okay? Okay, this one's already starting off a lot better. Maybe a little longer. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get another piece of marabou. I like, I like olive, black, and rust colors. This one here is cheap marabou. Well, drop two and put them in your case. You, you see how there's, there's little tips here? But you got a lot more fuzzy webbiness down in here. These are going to work a lot better for what we're doing. Okay? So sometimes a good quality material isn't what you really need to tie. Now, what I want to do is I want to take these tips of the marabou. Those are going to be my tail. Now, I, about a half a finger width, I'm just going to pinch in here and I'm just going to grab it and rip it. 
Okay, so that's that's my my grab and rip. Now what I'm going to do is all these tips that are in here. I'm going to group them together. See that? Now, really short. I'm going to grab them. You know, watch up on the screen. I'm going to go up. I'm going to put the thread between my two fingers. I'm going to come down and do a whole loop. And just about the time I'm done, then I'm going to put tension on it. Grab it. Loop the thread around. You see the material is twisting a little bit. That's good. That's three pinches. Okay. I'm going to put one, two more, and that's it. Now I'm done with my tail. Yeah, you're leaving about a half. Going to do, and, and I kind of discovered this by a, a long time ago tying in um, peacock curl. You can tie in a bunch of peacock curl, and you can wrap it on the thread and spin it around, and the thread gives it more structure. Peacock curl is really weak. This marabou is pretty weak as well. What we do is we're going to twist this excessive amount that most people just throw away, because we've got our tails in there. We can just throw it away and then put some other material in here, but um, it'll give us a really nice profile if, if we do this right and we got the right material. So when I grab this, I'm going to actually, if I was looking down the shaft of my thread, I'm going to do it um, counterclockwise. All right, so here, I'm going to do this again in a root beer color or a rust color. This will probably turn out a little bit better. Okay, so we tie in the tails. <laughs> and then I got a little bit more material. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just wrap it on here. Almost like Yeah. This one actually turned out pretty good. I got a little extra material, so I hold on to that. I finish my fly. About three or four wraps. I keep a good hold of it. I slip the scissors through there. It's tied off. And now I just finish it. Okay, so that one's pretty quick. So what you want are simple, quick flies that work. Yeah, but if you make them up in a, in a enough ahead of time, it'll it'll go pretty quick. Okay. Now, what I want everybody to notice with this fly, when I pass it around, the tail's probably a little bit too long, but the body proportion starts out kind of thin and slowly tapers up to a, a thicker body as it gets closer to the head. And as you fish that, those longer fibers up towards the eyes will actually push back towards the rest of the body and give it a little bit more bulk. 